Hi, welcome back to the Nurturing Coach channel. Thank you for being here, we do appreciate your views and if you haven't had a chance, please do click the subscribe button. It helps you to get notified of when new videos are out and it helps us improve our reach. So today I want to talk about estrangement versus alienation. And it often gets mixed up and in a lot of cases it's a mixture of both. So I wanted to just clarify kind of what it means and what it means for you more importantly as the parent and how you can work with it. So alienation. Alienation is essentially the other parent, step parent, grandparent, wanting to completely eliminate you out of that child life. And it can happen in very subtle ways with put starts off with maybe put downs, not notifying you of things, but eventually the long term plan is that the child rejects you because they're literally left with no choice by the controlling, alienating parent. And I've been through descriptions of that, so I'm not going to go into any more great detail, but ultimately the motivation of the alienating parent is to destroy your relationship cut you out of their life, prove that you are at fault, they're the hero, and they are protecting their child. And But most importantly, is that they get the child to do that rejecting themselves. They manipulate the child into believing that you're this awful person, you're this abusive parent, partner, everything person. And so the child will basically parrot a script given to them, this narrative that's created by usually a personality disorder parent. The more severe cases of alienation tend to involve a personality disorder parent, usually with either borderline personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder. And the child will tell anyone that will listen that they hate you and that you're mean and that you are you hurt them and that they're scared of you and they'll put on this grand performance. But what's going on behind the scenes is actually they're not feeling that. That's not their authentic feelings. They're being given no choice. They, they've been manipulated to believe this. They've been given this role to play under the guise of, of maybe, most of the time fear, the knowledge that the child has that if they don't do as they're told, then they will lose that parent, they've already lost you, they may lose their sibling, they may lose a dog. There's lots of different ways that it can be done. Like I say, sometimes it's overtly, sometimes it's covertly, but that's the motivation behind it. Estrangement is an authentic experience by the child. It's where something's happened. You may have had an affair and left. You may have lashed out at some point. You may have been baited to do so, but the child saw you get angry or do something. You may have been drinking more. You, you may have done something that led a child under any normal circumstances to be a bit, oh, actually I don't feel safe in their company at the moment or I'm angry at them at the moment and so I, I just don't want to see them right now. And the difference with that estrangement is that that's authentic. It's okay for them to feel like that and with the right support, i.e. encouragement from the other parent, that relationship can get back on track. It's an immediate response to feeling anger or feeling fear or feeling unsafe. And like I say, it's easily remedied and it's not long term. There's no, there's no behind the scenes motivation with that. It's just a genuine authentic response from the child to something that's happened. But what tends to happen in these cases is one of two things. It's a bit of a bit of a hybrid in as much as it can start off as estrangement. You you may have done something. This isn't about laying guilt at your door or to bl blame or we know the dynamics that goes on in these relationships. So I understand that baiting occurs and you can lash out and make a mistake. But from the child's point of view, it may start out that they're angry at you. Something happened and they're angry. 
But without the support of the other parent, the relationship doesn't get mended. In fact, what happens is the relationship is then turned into an alienation process because the other parent uses that to take you out of their life, to, to really ramp it up. So they'll take something that you've done and it will be continuously talked about. It will be exaggerated. It will be manipulated. It will be twisted. And so the child takes what was their authentic feelings, they were feeling angry, they were feeling scared, and it becomes their entire memory of your relationship. And so that's what's quite difficult in these cases. They have this real memory of something that's happened, but it's been so distorted that it's become inauthentic and alienation. So that's the estrangement and an alienation hybrid that's gone down that pathway. The other one, which is, it might be more difficult for you to hear, is where it starts off as estrangement. There was an incident. The children authentically reacted to that. And you immediately felt like it was alienation. Alienation gets talked about a lot, particularly in, in these sort of men's support groups and not all cases are alienation i've described those the typical ways that they are but what can happen is you join some of these groups and what was estrangement in your eyes can suddenly become alienation and actually that might not have been the case that might not have been what the targeted parent or not the targeted parent sorry the alienating parent was doing there might not have been any alienating tactics going on whatsoever it might have genuinely been a reaction from the children and had you given it time that relationship might have mended itself with the support of the other parent but it, all it takes is one little incident where you feel like the other parent isn't pushing that relationship and you can sometimes come on too strong you can become pushy and you can start saying well it's it's your mum's fault that i'm not seeing you it's your dad's fault that i'm not seeing you and they're to blame and it's this and that and the other they're alienating you from me when actually that wasn't what was going on but because you've said it they then genuinely become fearful they don't want to see you because you're acting a bit crazy you're saying things that they don't like and so you take it down that alienation path. And like I say, that might be really hard for some of you to hear. And I'm not here to lay blame. I'm here, what I'm here to do is try and help you to see that sometimes our behaviours can impact these situations. In fact, in all the time our behaviours impact these situations because we change. We allow that frustration, we allow that those natural feelings of sadness or guilt or remorse or frustration, anger, to take over. And to a child, that can be quite scary. And so what starts out as estrangement and could have been fixed, sometimes our own behaviours become so... So I want to use the word paranoid, but I don't want you to take that the wrong way. But you become so fixated on it potentially being alienation, which it may not have been, it may have been, but it may not have been, that you start making all these claims, you become obsessive about it, you, you, you go to school, you turn up all the time because you're so convinced that alienation is happening and you have to fight it, you have to see your kids absolutely understandable why you are doing that but sometimes it's worth taking that step back and thinking how are the kids seeing this what are the kids point of view of what's going on how am i helping them through this process rather than allowing your own emotions i'm aware that that's probably quite difficult to hear and it's certainly not about blame or that you've done anything wrong it's just about being aware how our own behaviors can can impact and so if you keep your children and how they might be feeling how, what can you do to make them feel safe secure while still fighting then keep that as your focal point and you won't go far wrong obviously there's still everyone around it but like i say you manage your own feelings because i work with 
I work with families in this situation and actually to, to the untrained eye it's really easy to see how decisions are made because the natural frustration can sometimes come across being quite hostile, quite aggressive and fits perfectly in with the narrative that the, that the alienator has been saying. So by being aware of that, by being aware how your behaviour is coming across sometimes to not just the children but also the professionals and other people involved, you stand a much better chance and that's why I do these videos, I do these videos to help you. I want you to win, I want to protect these children from the psychological abuse and sometimes that means telling you it's tough, sometimes that means being honest with you and saying things that you might not want to hear. So I hope that you take that on board, um, I'd love to know your thoughts, um, if you like the video give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and drop me a comment. Take care everyone and see you soon, bye bye. Thank you.